in taxes and we're going to start off with the knowledge that everything we earn and most things we buy are taxed. Now the question really is who really pays these taxes and you really think that in such a situation from your perspective you pay all the taxes. Income tax and social security taxes are deducted from your earnings. HST which is something that we have in British Columbia where I live is added to most of what I buy so what most of what I buy is also taxed uh, tax to me. So from this perspective, we can say that I pay most of the taxes. But employers pay employment insurance taxes for their workers. Producers of tobacco products, alcohol, and gasoline pays taxes every time they sell something. So it really, it really isn't obvious who pays the tax and lawmakers don't decide who pays. Now a little focus on tax incidents. Now, tax incidents is the division of tax between uh, buyers and sellers, or the division of the burden of tax between buyers and sellers. When a tax is imposed, the price paid by buyers might rise by a full amount, by a lesser amount, or not at all. And what these def uh, what full amount, lesser amount, or not at all means is written here. Full amount means that the burden of the tax falls entirely on the buyer. Lesser amount means that the burden of the tax is split between buyers and sellers. That means that both the buyer and sellers take a chunk of the tax and pay it. Not at all means that the burden of the tax falls entirely on the seller. Now, tax incidence does not depend on tax law. Uh, laws might impose a tax on buyers or sellers, but the outcome will be the same as I will go through this example with you. So, this example would be a uh, tax on sellers. Now, uh, with no tax, we can see that the equilibrium price is three dollars per dozen, and we're going by like a dozen eggs or something. We have the quantity here and uh, the dollar per dozen on the vertical axis. So with no tax, equilibrium price is three dollars per dozen. Now let's say that let's say that a uh, tax on sellers of uh, one fifth. A uh, dollar fifty per dozen is introduced. So we here we have this yellow uh, red line with the arrowheads at the end of the at the end of both ends. So one fifty tax on sellers are is introduced. So supply so this makes the supply curve shift up to four fifty, which is should be written here, so it rises to 450. So the supply decreases, and the curve S plus tax on sellers. This shows a new supply curve. So the market price that is paid by the buyer rises to four dollars a dozen. And we will just draw a line marking that there. So yeah, the market price paid by buyers rises to four dollars per dozen, and the quantity bought is decreased from three fifty to three twenty five. So we'll just draw another line here to reflect that, and that's good. So the price that is actually received by the seller falls to two fifty per dozen. So let's make that smaller. So two fifty per dozen. Let's make that bigger. And so you can see here that with the tax of one fifty uh one fifty per dozen, the buyer actually has to pay a dollar more and the seller actually gets fifty cents less. Fifty cents per dozen less. Because take a look here. Here we have our equilibrium price, which is three dollars per dozen. That is when there is no tax. We added a tax of one dollar fifty, and that that made a new supply curve S plus tax on seller, and that would uh, decrease the quantity bought, and then at this intersection between the demand and supply curve, that is actually the price that buyers have to pay. So now they have to pay four dollars, where before they have to pay only three dollars, and for sellers. Uh, where, they, where they were receiving three dollars, now they only receive two fifty. So sellers lost fifty cents, and buyers have to pay a dollar more. So that's how I got those numbers. Now let's take a look on buyers on the buyers side. 
and it's pretty much the same thing. So with again with the t no tax, the equilibrium price is three dollar per dozen. Now, a tax on the buyers of a dollar fifty per dozen is introduced. So let's just note that down that a dollar fifty tax is introduced. And you probably can't see the arrow here because there's a dotted line, but the arrow is right here. So that is the dollar fifty tax. Let me just open my lines. So the demand again, the demand decreases, and the curve D minus tax on buyers show the new demand curve, which is this red new demand curve, and the price received by sellers actually falls to 250 per dozen and again the quantity decreases and so the price is received by sellers the price received by sellers falls to 250 per dozen right so then we'll just draw a line here and let's make that line red for the heck of it so 250 per dozen and the quantity decreases. Now from here, since we changed the demand curve, we'll just draw a big black line right here to reflect the new quantity. And that's not really a straight line, but who the heck cares this is for the purposes of illustrating. Uh, so the new quantity dropped from 350 to 325. Now at the new quantity for the demand for the demand curve the demand curve pretty much reflects what the buyers will pay so the buyers really will pay four dollars for a dozen for uh, for eggs at the new price that includes tax so with a tax of a dollar fifty per dozen what happened was well a dollar fifty per dozen for buyers. What happened is that the demand curve dropped to this new demand curve called uh, demand minus tax on buyers, and this made uh, the quantity decrease, and it also made the price that is received by sellers to drop from three dollars, which was the original price without tax, to two fifty with tax. So again, the drop from three to 250 is a 50 cent loss so the so the sellers actually um, get 50 cents less for their dozens of eggs or whatever and the quantity fought, fell from to 350 to 325 and at this quantity the buyers pay four dollars whereas before they pay three dollars and so the buyers pay a dollar a dollar per dozen more than they used to so then let's end this with the commonalities and commonalities is a word uh, the commonalities are that the buyers pay a dollar more uh, well the buyers pay a dollar off the tax because the total tax was 150 so the buyers pay a dollar and the sellers pay the other 50 cent off the tax so that was the case in both cases sellers get 50 uh, cent less buyers pay a dollar more uh, sellers get 50 cents less, buyers pay a dollar more. Tax incidence is the same regardless of whether the tax says buyers pay or sellers pay. And that's where I want to leave us at. In the next video, we'll talk about tax division and elasticity of demand. But uh, this is the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.